Hey guys, Anthony Full Before Diesel. Uh, we've got quite a lot of videos on the suck control valve and related information in the VIP group on Facebook, Full Before Diesel VIPs. That's obviously for clients. Um, if you found me on um, Google or YouTube and you want a Facebook connection, probably the best group if you've got a 1KD engine is hashtag 1KD Forever Crew, or one word, 1KD Forever Crew with a hashtag there. So the 1, the K, the D, and the F is capital letters, and then C is a capital letter as well. <coughs> I'm going to start doing, look, you know, I'm doing as much as I can. This is, this, we've had some issues over recent times, over the last 12 months, with suction control valves, not themselves, but genuine Toyota parts, the way they come with watt O rings and stuff like that that we've been working with them to resolve and we think it's all under control now. So over the years things changed how they came and what parts were included anyway. But I'm just gonna give you a bit of a rundown. Um, so we do sell suction control valves. Um, and I'll say it again that all the older type, the short style, and I'll, I'll go and grab one of those, I should have done that. Just give me one sec. These are the short ones, right? That's what comes out. They're rubbish. They're problematic. Okay, they are rubbish. I don't. You don't want an old one or a new one of them. If your vehicle has got a short type, so there's a push type and a pull type. You can see this is the new one. We haven't got it out yet. Much longer body because it's a different type. Now we're going to get rid of that old one. Uh, into that container, I think it was. So we'll go ahead and we'll get it out of the bag for you carefully. You can have a look at it. Basically, if you've got the right genuine part number, this is the replacement unit, okay? That's how it comes. Um, well, more or less, just depends. There's a few other variables. You're upgrading to the longer type, so you need this spacer that comes with it. There's some different packaging, a few different things. There's some different O-rings. So I'm just going to quickly go through putting this together and preparing it. And I'm going to try and do a video on installing it, replacing it, but look, I don't know whether it's going to work out. It's one of those areas, it's a bit, it's fiddly enough to get the job done. Now, we can say it's easy, it is easy, two screws, whatever, there's a few other components you've got to move out of the way first to make it easier. And we will run through that in this or that video, whichever one it turns out to be. I'm not going to say it's easy, okay, because it is fiddly. Now, when I say fiddly, if it goes to plan, it can be really easy, okay? Really easy. If it doesn't go to plan, well, it's not really easy, is it? So let's just get all this gear out, out of the bags. All right, and these caps as well, handy for tapping the fuel on, so we'll get those out as well. We'll run through what everything in this kit is. Okay, so, need to get the tuba molly coat. This is why, when you grab the injector kit off me, it is handy to get that tuba molly coat, if you've done that or not, or whatever. Um, look, I'll throw it in with any other purchase purchase as well. Obviously, we don't sell it separately. You can buy it out there in stores, but you just gotta work out where. We're just gonna put a bit of molly coat on this O-ring here. All right, just a small amount just on the O-ring, nowhere else, just to give that a bit of lube. Okay, and this piece here, depending what model you've got, but usually this piece here gets installed over there. So we're just going to gently push and turn. There it is, that's how it goes, right? Don't try and compare what that looks like to your old one because it is totally different. Now, same deal, put a bit of molly coat on. Fingers are a bit stained, don't worry, they're not dirty there because you want to be really clean with this job, your engine bay. You don't want to get any dirt whatsoever in the back of that uh, supply pump. So that's one area we're going to put a bill of molly, molly coats. That's all lubed up. Now you've got two O-rings. See this plate here? Turn it over. You'll see the big slot, right? The big slot, pretty straightforward. The big slot is for the big O-ring, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put the big O-ring. I've put molly coat all over it. It's kind of like going to... I'm just going to pick it up for a minute. And just... Okay, so that's in place now, that's not going anywhere. That is going to go on the suction control valve first, and I'll show you which way, just give me one sec. Okay, helps 
when you've got some light on the subject. I just ducked out for lunch and turned the lights off to save greenhouse balloons because that's what we do. We can't stand waste. It's more about, you know, we have to take care of these things. So we've got the caps there. These are the guide pins, right? We'll go through those in a minute in part of the installation and these are the bolts you're going to need to bolt it in. So the important part is getting that on, getting that lubed up. And then what we're going to do with this is we need to turn this over and do the same thing. Now, this O-ring, it doesn't sit quite as well as, you know, it hasn't got a recess like the other one. This one's not going anywhere, right? It sort of sits in, it's almost flush, see that? It doesn't even protrude, does it? Makes you wonder if it would even seal, it's that, it's that flush. You think it'd want to protrude more than that and you need a fat O-ring, but anyway, they're the engineers, right? Now, we're gonna do the same thing with a molly coat with this smaller O-ring, so we're gonna get a bit of molly coat again. Get a bit coming out and kind of smother that o-ring in it so it's coated all the way around. All right. And then this spacer plate, sit the o-ring central as possible. So we're kind of like using that o-ring. We're kind of using the molly coat, I should say, as glue almost, right? So I just want to press that and make sure there's enough molly coat and, and I just want it all sitting really central like that yeah so you can see kind of just a little bit of the recess around the outside of the o-ring nice and square that's how it's got to be sitting right. I'm happy with that now basically what you need to know is you can see one side the o-ring sticks out the other side it doesn't right. the flat side is the side that goes against the suction control valve so this is how that's going to sit like that, okay? There's a gasket on the back of the supply pump, and you don't get a gasket with this kit, so you do need to reuse it. Um, it's a flat gasket that would cover this surface here, although we think the O-ring is going to seal it anyway. I suppose the gasket's a backup plan. When you take the old SV out, usually the gasket sticks to the pump, so have a look with your torch and make sure it's done that. Or if it's fallen off, you'll need to grab that, clean it, and then we use a bit of the molly coat again to kind of stick that in place at this side here. So it's a matter of just slipping that in. Now that's all ready to go. So that concludes this part of the video. So you'll either see this video, or I may join on the installation one, or there may be a separate one. There's videos all over the joint. There's hundreds of them, right? Subscribe, before before diesel, turn on notifications. Heaps of important information coming your way. Um, even this is relevant to other diesel engines as well, you know, fitting an SCV to any of those other, um, you know, similar parts and part numbers and stuff like that as well for a lot of vehicles. Um, but it's a lot of very similar useful information. So we're going to move over to the vehicle, get the old SCV out, and we've got this one all ready to install. Okay, let's see if this works out. Very awkward place to have a camera. But I'm going to try. I might knock it. It's just yeah, it's about to go. Anyway, 120 Prado. This one, as you can see, the power steering reservoir just here. Um, suction control valve is down. If you follow the fuel line down from the filter, there's the hose where it attaches to the pump directly underneath that plug. That's your suction control valve in there. Um, I'm trying to get the torch in the best spot. I could put it up here to show you that a bit more, but. It, I don't know what's going to work best. I need to keep it out of the way of what I'm doing. So look, suction control valve is down there. So the first thing we need to do, we've got the cover off, off the intercooler because that allows that curves around the side here and kind of gets in the way a little bit. So we've got that out of the way. That would be the first thing you need to do. The second thing you would need to do is let's take the clamp off that fuel line and remove the fuel line out of the way. We're just removing this to get it out of the way. Now, as I said, make sure everything's nice and clean. There's no filtration on your engine after this point, okay? So you might crack that loose by giving it a twist. <clears throat> you might not. So I'll go and get my usual tool for... If you've been watching my videos, you'll see that I use this tool a lot. It is one of my favourites. So it's like a heater hose removing tool, but we use it on the fuel, any lines, vacuum lines, fuel lines, whatever you like, right, you just gently put it in there, 
and just work your way back and forth. It'll crack the seal and stretch that just a little bit temporarily. And then, look, it's really a bit of a pain with the camera in the way here, to be honest, making me a bit unco. But it's gonna come off, right? But it's probably gonna flop off. Just can't get in my usual angles. So it'll make me look really unprofessional, like usual. Okay, so that fuel line, see it's slowly coming back. It's about to pop off, so we're just gonna bring that up. I don't mind if a little bit leaks out, but we're gonna bring that up here, out of the way, and pop it in a safe place where it's not gonna get filled with dirt, gunge, or anything even small, tiny little bits of dust, right? We're gonna grab one of those caps. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna use one of the caps that came included. Right. I'm going to use a different one. Why am I going to use a different one? Give me one sec. Of course, you just want to blow it out and make sure it's clean and clear. I'm going to use one of these red caps. Tell you what, these come off. They come off the Ryko, the rear fuel filter. So it's always worth keeping. <laughs> I thought that was going to happen. In the way. Totally in the way. That's probably why this video hasn't been done yet. Because it just doesn't work out. But anyway, red cap to cover that on the fuel pump. So we're not going to have any issues there. All right, this is a pretty straightforward job. I shouldn't really need to do a video on it. Undo the plug. Can you just sit there for a minute? So it's just very difficult keeping that camera there. And keeping the hands free. So, we need to just press on the tab and wiggle and pull the plug like always. We're just going to push that down out of the way a little bit. Right, so there's the SCV down there. Right, I can't even, so I block the light when I point to it, you know, down there. Right, so these are the tools we're going to use. Gonna get in there with a it's a Allen key five, see that? HM5. It's a quarter drive, just a little quarter drive. So we're gonna get down there and put the ratchet on undoing soon as it was on doing up for its last job. Crack that loose at that side, that one's loose. Around to the bottom side. Awesome. That's what happens when you try and hold the camera with one hand and uh, the ratchet with the other. Needed two hands for that. So I'm going to cut it at that and we might restart if I can be bothered after I find the ratchet. It's just sitting down there in the bash plate. Okay, so we've re-obtained our tool. I'm going to try that again. Still one handed just to prove a point that can be done. It's trying to turn that ratchet head. Oh no, it's gone on to tighten in the process of dropping it. Anyway, the King Chrome magnet sucked it up out of that bash plate okay so we've there's no point in me showing you this i'm taking two screws out right so you've seen the tool take the two bolts out of the scv i'm going to go ahead and do that now i'll leave it rolling so you can see how long it does or doesn't take it doesn't bother me just be out here out of the way hopefully where it's not going to fall down okay Okay, back to the top one. We're unscrewing that. Actually, I can probably get it by hand now. So I've taken the tool out just using the thumb and the index finger to get the top bolt out, which will be rubbish in the end because we're upgrading to that longer type and it comes with the longer bolts. Okay, so there's one of them. I'm just going to get to the one underneath. So it's, look, you know, you see people online asking, oh, you know, is it pretty easy or is it straightforward? Well, it is easy, it's straightforward, but it's fiddly because of the position it's in. You could say it's risky because if you get dirt and stuff in the back of the SCV, might not be a good outcome when you need to change your whole supply pump because that's a pretty big job. It's going to be a few hours. Timing belt and everything off. Or your fan shroud and everything off, you know, so you can get a puller in there to pull the pulley off and push that out and 
you know, and disconnect your fuel lines and pumps a bit over a thousand bucks. They're pretty cheap on these. Probably cheap because they can't sell them because we don't see any issues with them. I'm still going by hand on that bottom bolt. I reckon it must be just about there. No, not quite. And I don't want to drop the tool. I already had one drop on this job so far. You saw it. The whole ratchet. Okay, there's the other one. There it is, right? So now I'll get this stuff out of the way. And I'll try... really get in there I'll try I said I'll try and really get in there and show you some detail of you know where it is and where it's coming from and all that I'm not sure it's going to work out it's a matter of getting this thing in there where's some light even can we get some light on the job okay so down we go right there it is there you can see it the bolts missing out of it right, I'm going to see if I can reach in there Get my hand in, so it's blocking the light anyway. So you can't see that, can you? You can see it well until I block the light, like most jobs. Mm, change hands, let's see. Okay, so we're just gonna grab that. Get the light up here a bit. And geez, talk about perfection. Kinda need a few hands here. I haven't got them, so. Let's move the light more up here for this part. So I'll put that there. And just a gentle wiggle and pull. I'm sort of just pulling on that plug and wiggling and trying to keep my arm out of blocking the light. Persistent slowly. So there it is. And see the gasket stayed stuck on the back of the pump. That's what we want. Alright, so that's up here now. Yeah, while we're at it, let's have a look as much as we can, eh? Because we can. So let's pass this down in here. This is going to get really creative because we've decided that's what we want to do. Bring the light down. That's what it looks like in the back of the pump and where your gasket is. So if you don't touch the gasket, it'll just stay sitting there ready for reinstallation usually. But check it directly before you pass the new one in there because it could fall off between now and when we get to there, right? So just have a look at it with your light as I am now directly before you put it in. Jeez, that's turned out pretty well, doesn't it, to show you where it all goes? Some people will want to get to it through the wheel arch, whatever suits you. Um, yeah, this is what works for me. Without trying to worry about videos, I'd much rather do it without videos, just doing it for you guys, all right? I'd much rather just do it and not do it with videos. I'll probably get three times as much work done. So, and obviously that pays a lot better than what this does. On about what am I on? Five bucks a day or something. Um, hopefully we can build that up, guys. So watch the ads, press like and subscribe and all that. The more money I make, the more time I put in on videos, and that means more information for you. So we've got it out. Just trying to get this to sit. So it just doesn't want to sit anywhere really. I've got some other tripods and that, but they're not going to fit in here in the engine bay. Let's just see. Oh no, it's going to go. Hang on, back a little bit more. All right, getting rid of this old SCV. This is what it looks like when it came out. Right, as I said, the O-ring stuck on the end as it should be. That's your pretty standard thing. Now here's your tips for changing it and getting it in there, right? First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab one of my bolts and one of my guide pins, okay? Now one of my bolts, I'm gonna get a tool a little five mil tool. Don't worry, I don't need to show you. You just need to listen, right? Bit of molly coat on the end of the tool. Right, I'll show you anyway, there you go. A little bit of molly coat will do, just because that's what I've got handy. You can use grease or whatever you want, right? And a little bit, so here's the new replacement longer bolt that we're gonna use, just a little bit in there as well, just to make that kind of stick and suction in there, right? And we're just going to go like this to be sure to be sure like you know all right that way that ain't coming out right so i'm going to need to pick that up with my right hand so i'm going to sit that up on this sill here on the below the windscreen of the prado i'm also going to have my ratchet there now on do up so i'm putting that on do up so i'm ready we've also got these guide pins 
I suggest you don't use both of them because the one that goes at the bottom, at the back side of the, so one of your bolts is facing directly toward us, say toward the fuel filter, and the other one's the opposite way. And you've got the other pump underneath. So you've got a vacuum pump and a vein pump. So in this case, what the vacuum's on the front, so it's the vein pump on the back, I think, if I remember correctly, for the power steering. Gear driven, and it sort of gets a bit squashed in between and you can't get it out. So don't use the top guide pin. Sorry, don't use the bottom one, use the top one, okay? So we're gonna carefully pop that in the hole. That's gonna help make sure our gasket doesn't go anywhere, but it's not gonna go anywhere anyway. Just two turns in, not even gonna tighten it up because we don't wanna make it hard to get out. Now all we gotta do now is hold that replacement SCV. I'm gonna bring over my second bolt as well and put it in a safe place close by at arm's reach for whatever reason, if I drop one so I can grab the other one, whatever. So we've got our SCV here all prepared, ready to go, looking good, just rechecking all that. Oh no, I just rechecked it really well and pushed the O-ring out of centre, so that's not good, I'm going to fix that up. Just sit tight, we're getting there. Don't go yet, because you know there's always more information and tips as we go on towards the end. It's not planned, all these things, they're not scripted, planned like some other people's videos, it's just reality, it's how it is. So you can get my mistakes and all included for free. Okay, cool. So that's all hunky-dory. I'll show it to you, right? There it is. That's what's going in. And the plug's at the top like that. So as I said, the top is pointed toward the fuel filter, right? The top bolt. So that's going this top one over that guide pin. And we're just going to go boom in with the right hand. And then the left hand's going to come around like this and hold it with an index finger while the right hand goes and grabs that um, tool that we've got ready to put the bottom bolt in, okay? That's how I do it. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen with you while I'm doing this. You may fall, get knocked around or anything, but hopefully not. Hopefully I can, I'm gonna really put in my effort to keep you there. And let me just get that torch. I just wanna check that gasket's still there. It didn't fall anywhere in the meantime. No, that's good. Might block your view, sorry, but as I said, doing the best we can here, okay. And that's in. Did you hear it go click? That's how it should go. You might not have seen it, but you heard it go click, and that's in, right? This is my best suction control valve installation video. You know why? Because I don't think I've done another one. I may have, but I wouldn't have been this patient with it, I don't think. I would have gone, this is too hard. You can't get that video. I think I've written before to you guys saying, look, it's too hard, right? So I'm holding it with my right hand. What did I say I was going to do? Bring my left around like that to hold it. Then get my right hand to grab that tool and the bottom and reach over, which would be much easier if I didn't have to worry about not bumping the phone. Reach around to the bottom. It's going in the hole. Turning that socket. <laughs> core strength's really building up because <laughs> I'm, you know, standing up on a step, bent over the car, not leaning on the car, holding myself on a bend like that, keeping my body off the car completely because I've got a camera there sitting on a tripod. It's unbelievable. And I'm feeling that is like finger tight, about as tight as it's going to go, maybe. So got a bit more in it. No, I might have a bit more in it. The key is to hold it in firm, not fiddle around with it, because that's where you're going to knock and bump your O-ring out of place or whatever. Remember, you've got a few. You've got one each side of the spacer there where things can go wrong. And you're sort of working blind. You can't see what's happening. You've got to kind of go by feel, right? And my feel at the moment is, says, it's time to pull this socket out. So unless I was dreaming that bottom bolt's in. And that was hard work. Giving the tool a bit of a clean and my hands because I can't feel what's going on because I've got molly coat everywhere. Okay, now we can easily take that top spacer guide pin out. So you don't need to pay someone to do this, do you? You can do this, it's easy, five minute job. It pretty well is if everything goes to plan, right? I've done a lot of dorky talk, but it doesn't always go that smooth. I'm putting the other bolt 
without any molly coat, Captain Risky we'll call it. Right, not tipping that one upside down. The other bolt, because it's easy to access the top hole. Right, there it is, it's in, and we're spinning that one in. Definitely started. And your next thought is, well, how tight do I go? I hope that was your next thought, because I thought it was. You can put in the comments if it was your thought, if it was leading up to that, or if I beat you to it or not. Just don't expect an answer. Like I said, really busy. Happy to do what I can to put the information up, try and help you out. Put myself out of business working on cars. Um, no, no, that's never going to happen, unfortunately. It's just, uh, well... Okay, so the top one's nice. I'm just going to go back to that bottom one. Carefully get that in the hole. Right. How tight? Well, this is how tight, right? I'm using a quarter drive. I felt that it's all the way. And I just nipped it a little bit, you know. It's going into alloy, I think. Let me have a look what material yeah, it's going down. This one was going to nip it a bit more. Well, that one's pretty well came to a nice firm stop. So I'm just going to go back and check that other one. If I can get it back in. Wants to play difficult now, of course. These are the things that happen sometimes. I just like to double check it, alright? So, triple check it even, as I've mentioned in all the videos. Always double and triple checking. days I believe that that's all in they're all nice I'm not gonna bother trying to get a torque wrench on those I'm just gonna put the plug on click right this cap off right. the magic fuel line that was kept in a nice clean place down and on like a bit of fuel you get that did pretty well to keep it to a minimum. And this thing is going to run like a dream now after having this done. It makes a massive, small part that makes a massive difference. We've got a few in stock at the moment. Um, because of the change in the Australian dollar, prices change as well. So we buy them sort of, not bulk bulk, but a fair few. And the supplier we buy them off has told us that they are going up a little bit. So look, if you want to support us, you can grab one off us if you decide you need one. Now, I want to be clear, you don't need one. If you've got the long type already, you generally don't need one, okay? These are problematic, the short ones. Let's just be really clear about this. I'll show it to you again. If you look down there and you see this short thing, I don't want to hear about it. I want to hear you just the phone call. G'day Anth mate, how you going? I need an SCV. We don't need to talk about which one because that's the one, right? You want to replace one of those. If you've got the long one, you probably don't need it. Of course they're still a wear and tear item, but they're a lot more reliable. They work well. They're just, they're like anything else on the car. Let's not replace it if it doesn't need it sort of thing. So the short ones are typically found in 05, 6, 7, 08 and some 09s from then onwards are the long one. Unless you've had an engine change or a pump change or something like that, which is why it's always best to send me a photo of this area, including that suction control valve in the picture. Right? Or if, so you, if you're confident, you can tell me it's long or it's short or you can take a picture and send it to me and we'll confirm. If you've got other symptoms and you, we've been working together and We've gone through everything, you've got new injectors, there are all the other checks and tests and we've gone through everything and you've got some symptoms that may seem like it's that. I'm happy to supply you one of the longer type, which is different part number again, but I'll supply you one of those and just wait for some feedback to see if it solves your problem. So far, I don't believe that suction control valves have solved any problems on the later ones. Um, so yeah, not that confident that you've got an issue that you're such but look you know we need to try a few sometimes that does need to be you know a bit of a guess gnostic thing you know it is a guess because you can check these fuel pressure can look okay within spec and they're not necessarily so bada boom bada bing all right 
Job done. That's your suction control valve on a 120 Prado. I don't know what else I can tell you. I'm sure I forgot something, and that'll be in the next video. So subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.